How freaking cute is that mug though? Come on. Don't lie, it's really cute. Hey what's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you can probably see by the title of this video, I am going to be showing you my photography portfolio and not only that, I have asked you guys on Twitter for a few questions regarding photography. So if anyone watching this video, I'm assuming you're watching this video because you're interested in photography. If not, I'm sure there's something for everyone in this video, whether you like photography or not. But if you like photography, then great. Welcome, let's chat. So just a little bit of background story before we actually start talking about my portfolio. I just want to say I am a 17 year old photography student. I am currently studying photography at college, which is so like equivalent to A-levels, but I'm not doing the A-level course. I'm doing the URL, URL, <laughs> URL, great. I'm doing the UAL um, photography course. At college. I've almost finished my second year at college which means I'm going on to it going to uni in September which is um, quite a scary thought considering I've got to adult, like, I've got to, got to do adult shit. So that's pretty much where I am in terms of photography and my skills and stuff. I didn't do photography like at all through school, it were only until college. So it's only been really the past two years where I've actually done photography properly. Of course, I've always messed around like with photography on my phone and always knew that I absolutely loved it. Basically, I'm not an expert. So everything I'm saying in this video, don't take as me being like, hmm, I'm an expert, what's that? Because I'm not an expert at all. I'm not saying my work's amazing because I don't think anyone really likes anything they produce themselves. But saying that this work got me a place at uni, so if that stands for something, then that stands for something, but I personally have gone off it now, I've looked at it too many times, like I do my selfies, and now I really am not quite sure on it. So when creating my portfolio, I used InDesign, I created it in InDesign, and then basically sent it off to a place that publishes, not publishes books, but like, can put it into a binded book for me, which is what I have right here. So as you can see, it's A4, it's a fully white book. On the bottom, it has my name in like a cool font that looks like I'd written it myself in my signature. That's actually a font if you want fonts and stuff. Like that's literally the only writing in this book I have. First of all, when I started creating this portfolio, I had tons and tons of writing and I was like, you know what? If a uni wants me to explain my photos or wants to ask questions, then they'll invite me to an interview and that's what I'm there for. So there is no writing whatsoever in my portfolio. Some of you might be like, eh, but I personally prefer it more. I have a minimalist theme and sort of a simple more like just literally photos on a page that is it i don't really know how i'm going to show you this i'm probably just going to hold it up you open my portfolio to the first page which is this page of a photo shoot i've done most recently this is my most recent photo shoot it is a shoot that i use my cousin emily um i'll leave everyone like who features in this book below in case you want to follow them or whatever on instagram but yeah this is a shoot of my cousin emily i did basically i put her in a body stocking and made it look like she was breaking out of it so that's my most recent one that's why it's on the first page as soon as you open it so the next page is this page of model emily again emily's been a model for this page again as you can see there's a large photo on this side and then a slightly smaller photo on this side with a lot of white space around it like i said i was going for a more minimal feel throughout this is something that repeats throughout i didn't want to have every single page like a full page of the person's face. I think it works quite nicely having a lot of white space but don't do it too much because you don't want too much of a pattern but you also don't want everything to be the same you know. This next page is again a photo of Emily. I apologize if you can't see these photos very well but um, I can't see what I'm showing you because obviously the book's in front of my face. I decided to put this like American flag graphic on the background because I didn't really want to add any other photo. I wanted this photo to stand alone because I really like this image and I thought it fit well with like the street style sort of vibes her outfit gives that's why I did that I just created that on photoshop put it in I think it works quite nicely this is a photo of my friend Megan on this side and then this side is obviously Megan again but the photo of the trees in the background is my own photo I took that and I thought it worked quite well having instead of just a plain white background having like this tree I think it adds more interest and obviously it showcases that I don't only just do portraiture although this book is mainly portraiture because I love portraiture, that's one of my favourite things to take photos of. So to answer one of the questions I've seen earlier, my favourite thing to take photos of is people. I just love taking photos of people's faces and obviously I'm into fashion, so fashion photography is my favourite. 
I really love the textures in this denim jacket and again it's on a matte paper so it looks pretty cool. This next page is using Ella's sister Maddie if you don't know who Ella is. Ella's my best friend and this is her sister. Maddie has quite a grungy sort of street style anyway. All the clothes are super expensive brands such as Supreme and stuff. So I got Maddie in to do a photo shoot and these are some of the images from that shoot. Now I just want to point out, I forgot to say this in the beginning of the video, but every single photo in this book were taken in my front room. So if you sat at home thinking, I haven't got a massive studio, I don't have an amazing camera or big lights and stuff, I literally shot these in my living room. Like every single image in this book was shot in my living room. And you might be thinking, Byron, why when you have access to a fully functioning studio at the college? Yeah, I choose to do it all at home. Because you don't need all that. Photography is not necessarily about having the best equipment, the best lens, the best editing software, the best overall space to do it in. Like, I literally have two blinds, like a black blind and a white blind, you know, the blackout blinds, and I literally have them on two poles in my front room, just pull it down, whatever colour you want, and then I have a softbox. Like, my softbox was something like £30 of Amazon. The blinds were £10 each, so that's, that's £50. Like, it cost me £50 to a lot. To some people that's a lot, to others it might not be, but for a photography studio in your house, that's quite good. It's like literally a DIY studio. So what I'm trying to say is don't think you need expensive equipment or expensive anything to get good images. Like use natural light. Natural light is the best form of light you can use, but in my living room it's not that great, so I had to resort to a softbox. This next page is just a divided page. I just basically scribbled on a page in Photoshop because I wanted to keep the like, grungy sort of simple look throughout my portfolio and then on the pages it just says creativity is not about putting pens and paper it's within the eye of the beholder luckily i always have my camera on hand now i just thought that were nice to split up the pages i edited this as you can tell to look quite like graffitied and quite grungy again the photo behind is a photo of sheffield that i took not long ago i just made that black and white and then placed these two images on top I then went in to Photoshop and added some text. I just thought I'd be artsy fortune and put it on, basically. I think it looks cool. And that's all it matters. As you can see, it says red a bunch of times, and this photo of Maddie again, Ella's sister, is my model. She's an amazing model, by the way. Um, she has a red stripe down her face because we didn't plan on doing this, but we were taking some simple headshots, and I'm like, something needs to be on your face, like, we need to add something, some interest. I'm like, you know what, we're gonna paint a red line down your face. I don't really know why, might work, might not. And honestly, I think some of these images are all the strongest images I've taken by far, especially this next one. This is by far the best photo, I think, in here. It's the strongest. And yeah, it was the most simple photo to shoot. Like I literally painted a red line on her face, put her in front of a black wind and lit it with one line. This next page is another double page spread. This is another photo of Maddie. As you can see, it's a more zoomed in image. It's just of her eyes. I just liked how the eyes were the main focus and I liked how it sits across this double page spread. Like I absolutely love that with the red line directly down the spine of the page. I think that works really well. And the eyes are super sharp as well, so. I like it. This next page and one of the final pages is another page of Emily. I really like how this image sits on a full page and then they've got little images in the side. I think it flows really well because of the red lipstick. Like, I edited that on after. Like, she's not actually wearing red lipstick in the original. I edited that on to make it flow because the previous pages were red. You know? I also think that's important as well. Knowing how to make a portfolio flow is really great. And now I'm thinking of that quote. What's it from that where she's like, I got a heavy flow and a wide set vagina. You want a flow but not a wide set vagina, you know. I don't know where I'm going with it. And then on this page, I just have two photos of Emily again in this faux fur jacket. Just thought I'd point that out for any vegans watching. It's not real fur. So then on the second to last page again is Maddie. There she is. I put a little like Polaroid looking image on there just to mix things up. I think it really adds to like the sort of chill skater vibes in like her outfits and stuff. I really like that. And as you can see, I've literally used a bed sheet as a backdrop. I did have a solid white backdrop like I've used in previous, but I thought that looked too clean cut for the sort of style of clothes you were wearing. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get my bed sheet, chuck it over these poles that I have. And I think it works really nicely. It works a lot better than a clean cut background, put it that way. So the final page is honestly my favorite photo I've ever taken, ever and it's this photo. Now the entire portfolio is full of portraiture and it just ends on this photo of a rose 
but I honestly love this photo so much and it's red, it fits. I just wanted to include this because I absolutely love it. I basically froze a rose in an ice cream cup, in an ice cream container thing and this is what it turned out like. I absolutely love that image and again that was shot on my kitchen floor with natural lighting and my Canon G7X, this tiny little camera. This camera took that image and I literally had a black boat, like a black piece of plastic on the floor with the ice in the middle, the natural light coming from my back door and I took it on this little camera. That just goes to show you don't need expensive lights. Not a single light except the sun, which is free, were used. And I literally took it on this, a little compact camera. Not a hugely expensive camera, not a massive big camera, not a massive lens, nothing. Just a piece of plastic, some ice and a flower. That is all I use. Basically, do what you love and love what you do. If you want to take photos, then pick up a camera and start practicing. Like, you, there's no better time to start than now. What I'm saying is everyone become photographers and send me photos because I love it. I'm not saying that at all. Just do what you love, love what you do and have fun while doing it. Anyway, before I get too soppy and make myself sick whilst editing this back, I'm gonna go, hopefully you enjoyed my portfolio. If you want me to make more photography related videos, then please do let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're doing photography, head on over to my DMs and send me your work. I absolutely love looking at people's work. And yeah, I'm gonna go. I love you all lots and I will see you Sunday with a brand new video. Good. It's way too far away again. Bye! Also, I apologise for my hair yet again. Bye!